Before Imperfect Produce, I co-founded a nonprofit to recover food from campus dining halls that otherwise would be wasted. There's so much food that's going to waste on college campuses. Um, it's just really crazy. We were totally shocked because there was a lot of hunger going on in our community. We said, how can we be throwing away? It actually was somewhere around 200 pounds of good food per day. We literally approached the dining hall managers and said, hey, uh, if we had student volunteers who were trained, could we take this food and bring it to a homeless shelter? And they said, yeah, no one's really asked before. My friends and I developed this really simple model called Food Recovery Network to basically take that food and donate it. And spread to about 200 colleges across the country. And we started asking ourselves, how can we have a bigger impact? And, and our advisors and experts started saying, you gotta look at the fields. Where the most food is going to waste that could be recovered is actually on farms. We didn't necessarily have the connections as just a bunch of college kids who didn't know that much about farming. We didn't have that network of farmers. So when I met Ron, um, he really blew my mind. Our third co-founder, Ron Clark, has actually worked with these farms for about 20 years through the California Association of Food Banks. So he had relationships with you know, 60 to 70 of the largest farmers across California. Sometimes, sometimes we get Rejects just because the navel is a little bit too uh, tall. Also, it's not perfectly round, and some markets would not take that. Fruit is, uh, is sized. Every retailer and wholesaler wants to have a particular number of oranges uh, in a case. So it might be 38, it might be 40. So if it's too small, if it's too big, it gets kicked. If it's off color, it gets kicked. Uh, spotting, uh, hail damage, all things that are just exterior that still gets kicked. It's crazy, the aesthetic standards, for example, a, a pepper to be grade A has to stand on its own without falling over. The retailers won't take it if it doesn't stand on its own. So you can see the scar here underneath is perfectly good fruit. Some of it literally sits in the fields and never gets harvested. Some of it gets taken out of the fields and then gets thrown into a dump. They call the Salinas dump kind of the salad bowl of the world because it's just heads of lettuce and fruits and vegetables that go to waste. What we see here come in here and that looks perfectly fine. I mean, perfectly edible. It's fresh, nothing wrong with it. Open up the bag, it's not slimy. It's not, you know, it's perfectly fine. But typically what happens here in Salinas, we're on the west coast, so a lot of this bag stuff goes east. And trucking at east coast from the west coast to east coast, typically about three days to get there. By the time it gets to the stores, hits the shelf, most markets don't want it, not enough shelf life. So it ends up here. Since there's so much good food going to waste, we basically said, is there a way that we can market this in a way that would actually be attractive to people and not just seen as sort of this, you know, lowly byproduct that nobody really wants. Let's take ownership of the fact that this has imperfections. We all have imperfections. We basically said, all right, what if we could solve that problem by basically giving the farmer some extra income for the produce that would normally go to waste and in exchange sell a discounted box of produce uh, delivered to people's houses. Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll work with an orange uh, to give an example. The laborers go out and pick the oranges off the trees and then they get taken to these really large uh, packing and sorting facilities, you know, million square feet, where they're grading each piece of produce. And so in these facilities, they'll say, all right, this is a grade A orange, this is a peeler orange, this is a juice orange, this is going to waste. And there are people literally picking out the stuff that has scars on the outside so that it doesn't make it to the retailer and putting it in these huge tri-wall bins. And so at that point, they're either gonna dump in the landfill, we basically buy the bin from them, say, all right, we'll take these 800 pounds of oranges that would normally go to waste. Uh, from there, we do our own sort to make sure it meets the standards and is the really the same quality as a first first grade produce. You know, uh, we, we get some what we call all stars here, and this is pretty much one. It, it just has a, a what we call a belly button. Obviously, it's just a little extent, extension, and uh, people wouldn't buy that at retail. So you know, but it tastes just as good. I would say a lot of these actually are uh, size. Uh, related. I mean, this is this is too small. 
Uh, but you know, when you think about all the cuties and halos out there, uh, it's just perfect for uh, lunch size for kids. So many of these would not be marketable. You know, this is a beautiful batch of fruit. I'm sure the grower would be very happy with it, but he would be unhappy that it wouldn't make it to market. We pack customized boxes for people, and then we ship it up uh, onto their doorstep the next day. Right now we are doing um, an orange and tarragon tart. And what we're doing is we're using some oranges, some navel oranges that Imperfect has delivered to me. I'm really just trying to get the most um, I can out of this fruit and I'm trying to make it edible and beautiful and I think there's a lot of beauty and imperfection which is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. We just launched in Los Angeles which is really exciting and uh, we're looking to add two to three more cities within the next 12 months so we can offer uh, imperfect produce to a wider audience. Uh, it's a local delivery model so basically we're using different distribution hubs uh, to then you know propel local delivery you know to your doorstep. You know, maybe you want to make a difference in the world, uh, but you also want to get a paycheck and, and survive off of it. Um, I would just say that, you know, keep, keep an open mind towards social entrepreneurship. There's definitely a new breed of company that's out there, um, especially with, you know, millennials. We kind of have a new outlook towards what we want to see from the brands that we align with and this whole new field of basically for-profit companies that are in their DNA trying to make the world a better place, I think is really compelling. As we grow, it's, it's so exciting. It's very invigorating to meet new growers. A lot of the farmers will say, you know, we love all our children. It doesn't matter if they're ugly or beautiful or tall or short. Um, they want to see their produce eaten in the fresh market.